Welcome to three examples of expressing a function as a composite function. Your directions may also say decompose a given function. Here we're given h of x equals the quantity 2x plus 3 raised to the third power. We want to write h of x as a composite function in the form f of g of x. Remember we can also think of this as f after g of x. When decomposing a function, I think it's often helpful to use the alternative form of a composite function given by this equation here. So we want h of x equal to f of g of x, which we can also write in this form here, f of g of x. The reason this form is helpful, notice how in this form, it's easy to see that g of x is the inner function and function f would be the outer function. So when decomposing a function, we want to be able to look at the given function and determine which part is the inner function and which part is the outer function. So looking at h of x, our inner function is going to be the quantity 2x plus 3, and our outer function, function f, is going to be the cubing function. So to decompose a function in the form of f of g of x, we want to define function g and function f so that this composite function is equal to the original function. So our ultimate goal is to find what we're going to use for function f of x and function g of x. Well, we already said g of x is the inner function, so in this case it'd be the quantity 2x plus 3. And our function f, the outer function, is going to be the cubing function, so f of x is equal to x cubed. Now function decomposition is not unique, but to me this seems like the most obvious decomposition. So these would be our two functions, so that f of g of x is equal to h of x. And let's go ahead and check this. h of x should be equal to f of g of x. Let's go ahead and write it in this form here. Well, g of x is equal to the quantity 2x plus 3. So we can write this as f of the quantity 2x plus 3. So this quantity becomes the input into function f, which cubes its input. So this does give us h of x, which is the quantity 2x plus 3 raised to the third. So we've decomposed this function correctly. Let's take a look at a second example. Same question, different function. So we want h of x equal to f of g of x, which we'll go ahead and write using the alternative form or this form here. So again, g of x will be our inner function and f will be our outer function. Looking at h of x, let's let our inner function, g of x, equal the linear function 5x minus 1. And if we do this, then our function f, the outer function, will be equal to the square root function. So again, to decompose function h into f of g of x, our goal is to define function f of x and define function g of x. And as we already said, g of x is the quantity 5x minus 1, our linear function. And f of x will be the square root function, or the square root of x. This is what we're being asked to find. And let's go ahead and check this, meaning we want to make sure h of x is equal to f of g of x. Well, g of x is equal to the quantity 5x minus 1. So this is equal to f of 5x minus 1. This quantity becomes the input into function f. So we replace x with 5x minus 1, giving us the square root of 5x minus 1, which is h of x. So that checks as well. And again, these functions are not unique, but to me this does seem like the most obvious composition for function h. Let's try one more. We have h of x equals 1 divided by the quantity x minus 5. And the question is the same. We want to write h of x as the composite function f of g of x, which we can also write using this notation here. So we need to identify the inner function and outer function. This one may not be quite as obvious. g of x is our inner function. Let's let g of x equal the denominator of a rational function. Therefore, the outer function f is just going to be the rational function 1 divided by its input. So again, we have f of x 
and we have g of x, and we're saying g of x will equal the quantity x minus five, and therefore the outer function will be this fraction function, which would just be one over x. So these are the two functions the question is asking us to determine. Let's go and check this to make sure our composite function is equal to h of x. Now we'll replace g of x with x minus five, so we'll have f of x minus five. This becomes the input into function f, which is just one divided by its input, or one divided by, in this case, x minus five, which is equal to h of x. And that's gonna do it for this lesson. I hope this was helpful.